Robert Plant is here. He's best known as the front man of one of the most successful bands in rock history, Led Zeppelin. Rolling Stone magazine ranked Plant the number one lead singer of all time. No, it's not about it being my favorite or not. It's nothing, it, it, it's nothing to do with that, really. It's just that it belongs to a particular time. Robert Plant is an iconic English singer, songwriter, and musician, best known for his work as the lead vocalist and lyricist of Led Zeppelin. The rock star has enjoyed an illustrious career and made an indelible mark on the legacy of rock and roll music. Appreciated by fans for his enigmatic stage persona and experimental tendencies, the rocker is now 75 years old and has sadly drifted away from the glory of Led Zeppelin's heyday. Today we will explore the prolific legacy of England's founding rocker Robert Plant and uncover the secrets of his sad lifestyle. Robert Anthony Plant was born on August 20, 1948, in the black country town of West Bromwich, Staffordshire, England. His father, Robert C. Plant, was a qualified civil engineer who worked in the Royal Air Force during World War II, and his mother, Annie Celia Plant, was of Romani heritage. Plant was raised in the Haley Green area of Hale Sowen, Worcester, and he was interested in rock and roll from an early age. Biographer Paul Rees has reported that Plant had a happy childhood. Despite the fact that black country was an industrial area known for its heavy pollution and the effects of Wei Wei II bombings, Plant remembered his upbringing positively thanks in large part to his mother. According to Plant, Annie was joyous and musical, often singing and dancing around the house, spreading joy to everyone in her path. Plant's father was a proficient violinist, but he had previously abandoned his dreams to support his family. Although he instilled a love for cycling and football within his son, Robert Plant Sr. was conservative-minded and did not accept his son's artistic desires. He wanted him to pursue a career in accounting. However, the 10-year-old future rock star wanted to be like Elvis Presley. Plant stated that this was one of his earliest inclinations in pursuing a career in music. When I was a kid, I used to hide behind the curtains at home at Christmas, and I used to try and be Elvis. There was a certain ambiance between the curtains and the French windows. There was a certain sound there for a 10-year-old. That was all the ambience I got at 10 years old, and I always wanted to be a bit similar to that. Plant attended King Edward VI Grammar School for Boys in Stourbridge, but left during his mid-teens. His father had begun taking him to the town's blues club, Seven Stars, where Plant would mingle with the musicians. However, the more time he spent at the club, the less time he spent at school. He developed a strong passion for the works of Willie Dixon and Robert Johnson, and his mother's Romani influence further encouraged him to explore new opportunities. Plant barely scraped by with passing grades. He trained as an accountant for only two weeks, likely solely to appease his father before leaving home at 17. Allegedly, Plant was expelled for truancy. Nevertheless, Plant was about to embark on his own educational journey, though it heavily revolved around his unshakable love for rock music. Plant was highly interested in joining the English Midlands blues scene. The region had become a notable hub for blues enthusiasts and musicians contributing to the broader blues movement in the United Kingdom. The Midlands had a thriving live music scene with numerous clubs and venues hosting blues performances. These spaces provided platforms for local and international blues artists to showcase their talent and connect with audiences. While pursuing his music career, Plant worked various jobs. In 1967, he laid tarmac on roads while working for Wimpy, a major British construction company in Birmingham. Additionally, he worked at Woolworths in Hale Sowen for an unspecified amount of time. Plant's biggest musical inspirations were Skip James, Kerry Miller, Robert Johnson, Bucka White, and Sleepy John Estes. Plant created three obscure singles for CBS Records, where he sang with various bands, including the Crawling King Snakes. This connected him to John Bonham, the band's drummer. They would go on to play in Band of Joy, which combined elements of blues with the rising popularity of psychedelic music. The original Band of Joy lineup included Robert Plant, vocals, John Bonham, drums, Chris Brown, organ, Paul Lockie, bass, and Kevin Gammon, guitar. 
they primarily played covers of blues and rock songs. The band took its name from a song by the same name written by Welsh singer and songwriter Beverly Martin. During the band's short two-year run, Band of Joy gained local popularity in Birmingham. Plant's musical tapestry is woven with vibrant threads from multicultural backgrounds, a legacy inherited from his mother's deep embrace of Romani culture. With each note and lyric, he would depict a vivid portrait of his upbringing, infusing his later works with the rich essence of diversity. These cultural influences are not just ornaments, but the very soul of his music, underscoring the profound impact of his upbringing on his remarkable journey to fame and achievement. The beginning of Led Zeppelin. In 1968, local guitarist Jimmy Page searched for a lead vocalist to replace the one lacking from the Yardbirds. Page's first choice for a vocalist was Terry Reed, but he turned down Page. Instead, Page was referred to a show at a teacher training college in Birmingham, where Robert Plant was singing in a band called Hobbs Tweedle. Plant sang Jefferson Airplane's Somebody to Love for Page, and the rest was history. Plant has said of their first meeting, I was appearing at this college when manager Peter Grant and Jimmy turned up and asked me if I'd like to join the Yardbirds. I knew the Yardbirds had done a lot of work in America, which to me meant audiences who would want to know what I might have to offer, so naturally I was very interested. The Yardbirds had already been an established group for five years before Plant joined the rotation, but Plant and Page's shared passion for music breathed new life into the band. The two immediately developed a solid professional and personal relationship, and they embarked on collaborative writing efforts that started with reworking classic blues songs. With the addition of Plant, the group was briefly renamed the New Yardbirds. It was immediately apparent that the band's chemistry was exceptional. They quickly moved on from fulfilling concert obligations and began crafting original material. Soon, they realized they had developed a sound distinct from the Yardbirds and warranted a new identity. In October 1968, after a suggestion from The Who's drummer Keith Moon and bassist John Entwistle, the band adopted the name Led Zeppelin. This new name reflected a fresh start for the group and became synonymous with the evolution of hard rock and heavy metal music. The band's self-titled debut album was released in 1969 and is credited by many as the catalyst for heavy metal music. However, Plant has gone on the record and stated that he finds it unfair when Led Zeppelin is categorized as heavy metal, as almost a third of their music is acoustic. On November 9, 1968, Plant married Maureen Wilson, whom he had met at a concert two years before. John Crutchley, a friend of Plant's, has said, Maureen was good for Robert and he couldn't have wished for a better family because they took him under their wing. At 18, Plant moved in with the Wilson family, as he wasn't making any money in his musical endeavors. Wilson supported the couple by working as a shop assistant at Marks & Spencer. Plant and Wilson had three children, daughter Carmen Jane, 1968, and sons Carrick Pendragon, 1972 to 1977, and Logan Romero, 1979. In 1977, while touring with Led Zeppelin, Plant's five-year-old son, Carrack, died of stomach illness. In their first year, Led Zeppelin participated in four U.S. and U.K. concert tours and released their second album, Led Zeppelin II. The album was even more successful than their debut, reaching the number one position on American and British charts. Their musical stylings evolved with the times, and their second album was filled with brutal, heavy, and hard-hitting rock tunes. It was clear to anyone who noticed that Led Zeppelin pioneered a sound that had never been heard before. Led Zeppelin II was Robert Plant's first real opportunity to showcase his talents in the new band. He was instrumental in the writing process of that album, and his lyrics were often spiritual, mystical, and philosophical. According to Jimmy Page, Plant approached him and asked permission to write. Robert hadn't written before, and it took a lot of ribbing to get him into writing, which was funny. And then, on the second LP, he wrote the words of thank you. He said, I'd like to have a crack at this and write it for my wife. J.A.R. Tolkien was one of Plant's biggest literary inspirations. 
Tolkien, the author of the infamous Lord of the Rings trilogy, inspired lyrics in songs such as The Battle of Evermore, No Quarter, The Misty Mountain Hop, Over the Hills and Far Away, and Ramble On. Additionally, Plant drew inspiration from Welsh mythology. The singer had grown up taking trips to Snowdonia and bought a Welsh sheep farm in 1973. Later in life, Plant's interest in diverse musical experiences brought him to Africa, where he encountered Um Coltham. Led Zeppelin's trademark sound would be highly influential to later musicians and frequently imitated. Many, such as Steve Waxman, have suggested that the band's secondary album was the unofficial starting place of heavy metal. After the release of Led Zeppelin II, the band completed several more tours in the U.S. They started playing in clubs and ballrooms before graduating to larger auditoriums as their popularity increased. Led Zeppelin concerts famously lasted for more than four hours at a time, especially at the beginning of their story. They expanded and improvised segments of their live repertoire on the spot, presenting the audience with a truly unique, unparalleled concert experience that had not existed previously. During this stage in the band's development, individuals began noticing the group's collective excessive tendencies. The members of Led Zeppelin were known for their extravagant lifestyle, both on and off the stage, which sometimes included drug use. These unsavory practices would ultimately lead to the downfall of Led Zeppelin and the tragic death of one of its members. Plant Stage Persona Robert Plant was the lead vocalist of Led Zeppelin and he developed a charismatic on-stage persona. His image as the lovable rock and roll frontman was similar to some of his contemporaries. Mick Jagger, Freddie Mercury, Kim Morrison and Roger Daltrey were all compared to Plant. He sported a long blonde mane of hair and an intense unbuttoned demeanor. He was often seen jumping, skipping and dancing around the stage, infusing every performance with energy and fun. As the 1970s progressed, Plant and the other members of Led Zeppelin leaned into their wild stage personas, wearing increasingly flamboyant outfits and jewelry. Plant has reflected on his iconic stage persona. I can't take my whole persona as a singer back then very seriously. It's not some great work of beauty and love to be a rock and roll singer. So I got a few moves from Elvis, and one or two from Sonny Boy Williamson II, and Howlin' Wolf, and threw them all together. One of the strangest awards Plant received was the Chest o rama honorific from Rock Scene magazine. Readers reportedly voted on the best chest in rock music. When they contacted Plant with the news that he'd won, he said, I'm really greatly honored, although it's hard for me to be eloquent on the subject of my chest. From 1970 to 1975, Led Zeppelin reached unprecedented levels of fame. The band's critical and commercial success made them one of the era's most influential musical groups, surpassing the success they had already experienced. Each member of Led Zeppelin had transformed into a bona fide rock and roll icon at the peak of celebrity. Their image had also evolved, showcasing each member in a flamboyant, exaggerated getup. They released two more albums. Led Zeppelin IV is one of the best-selling rock albums in history, with over 37 million copies sold. Its massive popularity cemented the group as founders of the genre. The track Stairway to Heaven was never released as a single. Despite this, it became the most requested and played song on American rock radio in the 1970s. Following the album's release, the band toured in North America, the UK, Japan and Australia from late 1971 to early 1973. The band released one more album, House of the Holy, before taking a touring break. During this hiatus, Led Zeppelin launched their own record label, Swan Song. While the label was successful during Led Zeppelin's reign over the charts, signing artists such as Pretty Things, Bad Company, and Maggie Bell, it dissolved three years later. Led Zeppelin released Physical Graffiti in 1975 under the Swan Song label. It achieved gold status within the Recording Industry Association of America within a week after selling over 500,000 copies. They had planned on returning to touring later that year, but reality had different plans. The End of Led Zeppelin 
In August of 1975, Plant and Wilson were unfortunately involved in a catastrophic car accident. While vacationing in Rhodes, Greece, Plant, his wife, and their children all sustained severe injuries after the family's vehicle flew off the road. They flew back to England to receive emergency medical care, where Wilson was diagnosed with a broken pelvis. Plant had sustained a fractured ankle and an injury to his elbow. A blood transfusion saved Wilson's life once the family was back in England. Plant spent time on the Channel Island of Jersey recuperating alongside Bonham and Page. Then, they relocated to Malibu, where Plant wrote lyrics for much of the next album while posted in a wheelchair. Presence was released in March of 1976. Led Zeppelin had become the world's number one rock and roll group, outselling bands like the Rolling Stones. Presence offered a new take on Led Zeppelin's classic sound, producing more straightforward guitar tracks, a departure from their earlier releases of acoustic ballads and convoluted melodies. The album received mixed reviews, with some critics suggesting that the band's tendencies toward recklessness might have gotten in the way of the album. Page was using heroin at the time, though he has since denied this. The band finally embarked on another tour in 1977 after Plant had had enough time to recover from the car wreck. On April 30th, 1977, at their Silverdome concert, Led Zeppelin had over 76,229 attendees present, marking the largest concert attendance to date at the time of the performance, according to the Guinness Book of Records. The hordes of fans commonly engaged in malpractice, with many arrests and consequences due to the crowd's debauchery. Drug use and alcohol abuse were both standard practices at Led Zeppelin shows, Led Zeppelin embarked on a brief tour in June and July of 1980, where they performed stripped-down versions of songs from their discography. On June 27, their performance in Nuremberg, Germany, abruptly stopped when Bonham collapsed on stage. He was rushed to the hospital, and many assumed that the reason for the incident was rooted in drug and alcohol abuse. A few months later, on September 24, Bonham was picked up from his home by a band assistant and taken to breakfast, where he downed approximately 16 to 24 ounces of vodka and a bite of a breakfast sandwich. Bonham was then driven to rehearsals with the band, rehearsing with them until late that evening. He was finally taken to Page's house in Kluwer, Windsor, where he reportedly fell asleep on his side. In the morning, Benji Lefebvre and John Paul Jones found Bonham dead. The autopsy concluded the cause of death to be asphyxiation due to vomiting, finding the death accidental. No other drugs were found in Bonham's system other than Motivil, an antidepressant cocktail he had recently been prescribed. It remains unclear whether or not the medication had a negative interaction with the alcohol. Bonham was cremated, and his ashes were interred at Rushock Parish in Worcestershire on October 12, 1980. As a result of the tragic passing of their fellow bandmate, the remaining members of Led Zeppelin canceled the scheduled North American tour. Subsequently, they disbanded, stating, We wish it to be known that the loss of our dear friend and the deep sense of undivided harmony felt by ourselves and our manager have led us to decide that we could not continue as we were. Plant had known Bonham since high school and the latter musician's death was the only reason for their inevitable separation. According to sources close to Led Zeppelin, 1977 was the year in which Bonham's alcoholism took a turn for the worse and ultimately led him down a fatal path. Plant could not continue in Led Zeppelin without his longtime friend and collaborator by his side. After Bonham's death and the consequent disbandment of Led Zeppelin, Plant was disillusioned by fame. He briefly considered becoming a teacher and abandoning his music career, going so far as to be accepted into the Rudolf Steiner Education Program's teacher training program. Robert Plant plans to go solo. Despite his wavering aspirations, Plant nevertheless decided to return to music. As a close friend of Phil Collins, the Genesis drummer encouraged Plant to embark on a solo career after the crushing death of John Bonham. Collins would later perform alongside Plant. In 1982, Robert Plant released his debut solo album, Pictures at Eleven, 
followed by 1983's The Principle of Moments. His musical outputs as a solo artist showcased a clear departure from his prior career with Led Zeppelin, featuring a blend of rock, blues, and synthesizer-driven arrangements. Some songs became hits, including Big Log, 1983, In the Moose, 1983, Little by Little, 1985, Far Post, 1985, Tall Cool One, 1988, and I Believe, 1993. Collins often accompanied Plant's live performances throughout the 1980s. All My Love was written and dedicated to Plant's late son, Carrick. While the rocker avoided performing any Led Zeppelin songs while touring solo, his 1983 and 1985 tours were incredibly successful. As a solo artist, Plant often performed in sold-out arenas, even performing at the Birmingham Heartbeat Charity Concert in 1986. Although Led Zeppelin had disbanded, Plant and Page occasionally collaborated. In one instance, they teamed up with Jeff Beck in 1984 to create a short-lived band called the Honey Drippers. The group released one EP in 1984 titled The Honey Drippers Volume 1, which was met with moderate success. During the late 1980s, Plant co-wrote three solo albums with Phil Johnstone, a songwriter and keyboardist. Together, they released Now and Zen, 1988, Manic Nirvana, 1990, and Fate of Nations, 1993. Songs from these albums eventually made their way onto Plant's set list for his legendary performance at the main stage of Glastonbury Festival in 1993. Jimmy Page collaborated on Plant's Now and Zen and teamed up again in 1988 on Page's album Outrider. Later that year, Plant appeared as a member of Led Zeppelin when the band performed alongside Queen at Wembley Stadium for the Freddie Mercury Tribute Concert for AIDS Awareness. Despite his bold decision to go solo, Plant reunited with Page in 1994. The two became a fully formed performance duo in 1998 during which they released an album called No Quarter, Jimmy Page and Robert Plant Unleaded, 1994. Following the album's release, they embarked on a hugely successful stadium tour, where they returned to Glastonbury. It had been 14 years since the two had publicly worked together, and fans' collective theories of tension between the two former bandmates were quickly put to rest. After rejecting years of invitations from the network, they accepted an offer from MTV to appear on an unplugged show. However, they accepted on the condition that MTV send the duo to Morocco, where they would record new music. In 1998, Page and Plant released the album Walking into Clarksdale, which was unsuccessful. After another attempt at touring, Plant finally decided to retire from his solo career. Robert Plant forms a new band in mid-1999 Plant assembled a gang of musicians comprising Priory of Brian, his folk rock band. Priory of Brian performed at several small venues through 2000. Players included the original guitarist from Band of Joy, Kevin Gammond, alongside Paul Timothy, Paul Wetton, and Andy Edwards. Together, they performed at around 100 concerts across Europe and covered songs that were influential to Plant. Later that year, Plant contributed to Skip Spence's tribute album. The co-founder of Moby Grape was terminally ill, and the album More Or, a tribute to the Skip Spence album, Birdman, 1999, honored the singer-songwriter. Plant was a longtime fan of Spence and Moby Grape after first hearing their self-titled debut album in 1967. In 2001, Plant was featured on Afro-Celt Sound System's album, Volume 3, Further in Time, which boasted the track Life Begin Again. The song was a duet with a Welsh folk singer, underscoring Plant's recurrent interest in Welsh culture and folklore. By 2002, Plant has formed a new band, Strange Sensation. The group was a British hard rock band whose debut release of blues and folk remakes was highly praised by fans and critics alike. Dreamland offered listeners diverse cover songs ranging from blues and folk to rock and roll classics. Some of the tracks included on the album were Morning Dew, Hey Joe, One More Cup of Coffee, and Darkness, Darkness. The album received two Grammy nominations, followed by another two in 2006 for the band's album Mighty Rearranger. 
In 2005, as a former member of Led Zeppelin, Plant was honored with the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award and the Polar Music Award alongside Jimmy Page and John Paul Jones. From 2007 to 2008, Plant recorded and performed alongside Alison Krauss, a bluegrass musician and fellow star. Together, they released Raising Sand, a duet album, on October 23, 2007. The song Gone, 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 Done, Moved On, 2007, won a Grammy for Best Pop Collaboration with vocals at the 50th Grammy Awards in 2008. In 2009, Raising Sand won five Grammys, Album of the Year, Record of the Year, Best Pop Collaboration with Vocals, Best Country Collaboration with Vocals, and Contemporary Folk Americana Album. The album was celebrated critically and commercially, and it was nominated for the Mercury Prize in July 2008. Plant and Krauss embarked on an extended tour Go Europe and America in April of 2008. They played music from Raising Sand and even performed some cover versions of Led Zeppelin songs. The two would later collaborate in 2021 on a 12-track studio album, Raise the Roof. In July of 2010, Plant set out on a 12-show summer tour with his newly assembled band, Band of Joy. Reprising the name of his first band, Robert was joined by Patty Griffin, Buddy Miller, Daryl Scott, Byron House, and Marco Giovino. They released a self-titled album on September 13, 2010, and it was nominated for Best Americana Album at the 2011 Grammy Awards Ceremony. Additionally, Plant's performance on the track Silver Rider earned him a nomination for Best Solo Rock Vocal Performance. Plant continued to work with Band of Joy through 2011, with their last performance as a group held on September 30th at San Francisco's Hardly Strictly Bluegrass Festival. Plant's next musical venture would bring forth the newly assembled band Sensational Space Shifters. He recruited former Strange Sensation members, casts Liam Skin Tyson, Justin Adams, Billy Fuller and John Baggett, and Dave Smythe and Julda Kamara. For their first few shows, Patti Smith performed as a special guest. Plant's 10th studio album was released as his first album with Sensational Space Shifters. Lullaby and The Ceaseless Roar was released in 2014 and received widespread critical acclaim upon its release. Critics praised the album's innovative musical approach, Plant's emotive vocals, and the band's tight performances. Three years later, Plant's 11th studio album, Carry Fire, was released on October 13, 2017. Upon its release, the album received critical acclaim, with praise directed towards its musical diversity, emotional depth, and Plant's continued evolution as an artist. The album's title track, Carry Fire, as well as songs like The May Queen and Bones of Saints, showcased Plant's ability to create richly textured and immersive sonic landscapes, how Robert Plant lives now. In 2018, Plant was awarded the AMA Lifetime Achievement Award, after 50 years of rocking out, Plant had cemented himself as a founder of rock and roll music. In 2012, the rock star joked that he had eloped and ran off to Texas with Patty Griffin, but he had only been living with her in Texas for an extended period. It was the happiest anyone had seen Plant, but sadly it didn't last. In 2014, Griffin broke up with Plant. In an interview, he sadly stated, Patty and I tried a sort of zigzag across the Atlantic but she didn't share my penchant for cider, and she used to marvel at the black country character I became after four pints of Thatcher's. My feelings are very much ones of sadness and regret. After his split from Griffin, Plant suggested that Lullaby and The Ceaseless Roar might have been his final album, implying deep and complicated feelings of heartbreak. However, we know now that Plant would later release Carry Fire, putting some of his fans' anxieties at ease. In 2007, after years of rumors about whether or not Led Zeppelin would ever reunite, the band performed a two-hour set at the Amit Erdogan Tribute Concert. Despite massive demand from the public and a $200 million offer for Plant to continue the summer on tour with Led Zeppelin, the rocker declined. In 2008, Plant blamed the delayed reunion on bandmates Page and Jones, stating, They are Capricorns. They're quite contained in their own worlds and they leave it to me. He added, 
You need to see the Capricorns, I've got nothing to do in 2014. In response to Plant's unkind words, Page admitted to the New York Times that he was frustrated with Plant. I was told last year that Plant said he is doing nothing in 2014, and what do the other two guys think? Well, he knows what the other guys think. Everyone would love to play more concerts for the band. He's just playing games, and I'm fed up with it, to be honest with you. I don't sing, so I can't do much about it, Page said. In response to this, NME reported that Plant was personally offended by Page's admission, revealing that the two former bandmates had grown apart since their retirement. Like all individuals, Robert Plant's life was multifaceted, with joy, sorrow, success, and challenging moments. With an unquenchable thirst for rock and roll, Plant became an instrumental figure in the historical legacy of rock music. Contributions made by Led Zeppelin and Plant as solo artists have shaped the modern music industry and paved the road for today's popular artists. Thank you for joining us. Before you leave, check out one of the other videos on your screen. You will want to take advantage of this opportunity.